Biobalance HealthCast episode 194. Lose weight by changing your behavior. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. Dr. Maupin and I have been doing a series of health casts on the myths of hormone replacement versus the facts of hormone replacement. And our most recent health cast was on the myth that if you replace your testosterone, you will get fat, you will put on weight. Uh, We talked about that. Uh, and that issue in our last podcast, but we got more into the weeds about healthy eating and healthy lifestyles than we were able to do in that podcast. So we decided we would come back in this podcast and we'd talk about the things that you need to do to supplement or complement what you do when you replace your testosterone in terms of weight control, Mm -hmm. muscle strength, uh, healthy living lifestyles. So today we're going to be talking about all of those things. And I want to start with a conversation that not all calories are the same. There for everyone. Are for, for everyone. <laughs> uh, because you can't just count total calories. You have to be conscious of certain factors that contribute to your weight status. So we're going to start it's, with that. It's like when, we, when, when a patient comes to me to begin with, and I, have, I go over the factors of weight gain with them, if that's one of their issues, mm-hmm. and that is that your genetics determines how easy it is for you to lose weight, first of all. And that's very important. So if you're sitting next to your sister and you're, you have your genetic, your genetic makeup that makes it very difficult for you to lose weight, and your sister got the genes from your other parent that caused her to be really skinny, but you eat the same amount and you gain weight and she doesn't, right. even if you had the exact same activity level, then that's just what you were born with. Some, we all have crosses to bear, and and that's one of them. If you have a slow metabolism to begin with, that's really something that we can't change. Okay, so we have to start there. So a calorie for both of you is not equal. One, you will gain more weight than your sister. So genetics is something we start with. Then when you get to me, you're a certain weight. So if you're a hundred pounds overweight then that is going to be a longer, more tedious task to get you down to an ideal weight with uh, a BMI less than 25, because that's ideal. That's where a BMI is your surface area, basically your height and your weight in a formula that tells us whether you are at a healthy weight or not. Your body mass index, mass meaning weight, Mm -hmm. which could be fat or muscle, but right. it's the density or gravity of your it's body. It's not perfect. No. But but, but, but it gives us something for us mm-hmm. to look for in terms of are you healthy or not. But one of the um, – so the way to begin with, our genetics, your behaviors, the behaviors like I talk to people about the junk food they eat and things like that, and, and they're like, yeah, I have it all in this one cabinet. And I'm like, okay, so today we're starting this new life, and I'm going to replace your hormones – you got the genetics you've got. You're starting out a lot overweight. Mm-hmm. You're going to go home and you're going to take all that food. And if it's not open, you're taking it to Goodwill or where a food pantry. And then you're dumping all of that and fill, fill that closet up or that pantry up with something else, not junk food. And all the rest of your family is just going to have to understand okay, this so, is what you so are let, going to have to do. Let's talk about not junk food. What constitutes okay. not junk What should I fill my pantry with? Beans. Nuts. Nuts. Grains. <laughs> I mean, all the whole foods, flour. Mm-hmm. You can have sugar because you have to cook with real sugar. Real sugar. Yeah, real sugar. That you sugar. have to cook, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not but not high fructose sh- corn syrup. No, yeah. no, but real cane sugar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can use, there There are substitutes for that. You can, um, there are some granular substitutes that aren't sugar, sugar. Mm-hmm. But you can make cookies, but make them with lower, sh- lower sugar content. But if you okay. buy them, if they're in a bag or if it's something that you have to open that's already been processed pre, pre-packaged pre-processed it's not good for you slow down on it yeah, get you rid can have of dried as fruits as you, you can. can have if you're looking talking about snacks which is what she was talking about she needs a lot less food in there mm-hmm. and she needs a lot of healthy foods so so a 10 pound package of <laughs> deep fried potato chips are gone shouldn't be there and you know the m&ms and the 
whatever. I know it hurts, Kathy. It I know hurts. it hurts. I know it hurts. <laughs> and the and the whatever ding dongs or whatever yeah, they, that yeah. that stuff is disgusting. That should just go to the trash. My wife's sure great grandma lived to be a hundred and two. And one of the things I heard her say before she died was, "If it won't rot, don't eat it." That's true. You know, if yeah. you buy these foods, you can put on bad. the shelf. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't go bad, mm-hmm. don't eat it. And I mean, and if you love pasta, <coughs> get whole wheat pasta or get pasta made out of. They have lots of gluten free pastas now. Mm-hmm. I mean, or just change change the amount that you eat. But these beha- you have to. I, I think but, a but there's not a magic bullet. I mean, you no. can't just go to a gluten free diet and all of a sudden you're going to drop. Oh, I didn't pounds. mean that. <laughs> no, but but a lot of people think that, and they're looking for that. Well, the only reason I that want works, a quick fix. The only you know, mm-hmm. the only it does work for some people because there's gluten in almost every carb, so you can't eat carbs. Yeah. So they just look at it differently. I say don't eat carbs, and they say don't eat gluten, and you know that that makes them lose weight. Well, but and, it's a different avenue. And you're talking about genetics and metabolism. I can remember that when I was younger. If I wanted to drop five pounds, I could just stop eating bread for two weeks, and mm-hmm. I'd drop five pounds. Now, I don't eat bread at all, but I still have that five pounds. Yeah, our metabolisms, I mean, we have a lot more testosterone, a lot more growth hormone when we're young, and we do burn calories easier mm-hmm. for most of us. Not everyone has had that experience. but that. So those are some of the things that we talk to people about is is and I want you to talk about behavior, but the last thing on my list is exercise right. and actually planning your diet a week ahead and writing down everything you put in your mouth because then you have to look at it. Yeah, I mean I've done that before mm. where I've had the pen in my hand and crackers in the left hand, pen in the right, going mm, I don't want to write it down. Put it back. I mean that works. Absolutely works. You know, being conscious and deliberate about your food choices. Yeah. We get on autopilot. In this culture, we are encouraged to be on autopilot, just drive through the fast food joint, grab a bag of something, eat it on the way to the soccer game because it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. But it isn't more healthy. And if we buy our food in a deliberate and conscious way, uh, go to fresh markets uh, Mm -hmm. where you can get fresh tomatoes and fresh greens Mm -hmm. and fresh corn. it makes a difference if you plan your meals mm-hmm. and you buy it's the ingredients true. for the meals you've planned. You just don't go and grab bags of stuff and that have been prepared and cooked because you're going to be in a hurry. And so, you know, Wednesday night I'm going to be home late from work, and then I've got a meeting at church to go out to, and i got to get dinner for the kids. And so if I buy this frozen lasagna, I can pop it in. Sometimes for emergency situations, you can certainly do that. It's easy to make but a salad. But as a daily lifestyle, you don't want to do that, and you don't want to teach your kids that. You, I'm, I mean, when I delivered babies and had Rachel at home, and I— I would on Sunday. I would make things that were partially yes. cooked yeah. that I could either freeze for the end of the week or put in the refrigerator that could just be could but be put, put on the meat. stove. Or, but I planned it, you, and I also had veg. I always had vegetables. My goddaughters always would laugh. They say, "You know, we come over and look for stuff to eat, mm-hmm. and you your refrigerator was so weird because you always had eggs, bread. I mean, they know what I have in my in my refrigerator right, right. all the time: eggs, yeah. bread, orange juice." Milk, whole milk, because mm-hmm. whole milk yeah. fills you up, and skim milk, you just keep drinking it, and you're never full. So whole milk, half and half, and you always had, like, lean turkey and Swiss cheese to make sandwiches right. and all the salad stuff. So they knew what was in my refrigerator, and they're kind of like, what can we do with that? Mm-hmm. Where's the junk food? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, we had junk food, but we hid it somewhere else. And that was... Locked it away. I have to admit. But I'm not saying that that was good. I'm just saying that was my failure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or my husband's. Whatever. That that was that was one of those things that are we your, all have mistakes. Are your mistakes. chosen indulgence. It's all right to do some of these things one time. Yeah. Or sometimes. It's all right to have birthday cake for your birthday. It's not all right to have cake every single night. Or wine every single night. Yes. I mean, everybody so, who tells me they have two glasses of wine with their husband every night. So that's four glasses of wine. Is that really a whole bottle? Is four glasses of wine a whole bottle? Unless well, your glass is like bottles, it, well, you can get different sizes. But in any way, that's a lot of wine. That's a lot. You're just drinking carbohydrate. You're just putting carbohydrate into your bloodstream. It's just like eating cake or pie. So if you think that's saving you, yeah. 
weight, it also makes you hungry. It makes so if you, you if you eat it puts before, more sugar in it makes your system, you eat more. Which so, is that whole sugar cycle we were talking right. about in the last podcast. So you're that increases defeating your yourself. hunger levels. No, yeah, absolutely. Right. And actually, the Harvard Food Plan, uh, the food plate, not the mm-hmm. pyramid, the, the newest new food plate, plate, recommends that you drink water. At your meals. Yes, and, it, and, and you should. You have a formula for your patients in terms of weight loss that they should drink half their body weight, body weight in ounces, in ounces of mm-hmm. water every day. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, so if I weigh 200 pounds, I should be drinking 100 ounces mm-hmm. of water a day. That's what you need to flush. You need water to flush out fat. You need water to me- metabolize your food. Mm-hmm. So you should be drinking all that water so that you can actually lose weight, and mm-hmm. it flushes it out of your system. And and. Part of the issue here is the food marketing industry that Mm -hmm. teaches you through all the advertising and the media that comes to you that you should have something flavorful to drink with your meal. Mm -hmm. And so you need this flavor or that flavor drink to have, whether it's soda or wine. Something that costs something instead of out of the tap. Absolutely. If you just get a glass of water and and teach yourself to drink the water, Mm -hmm. you have to learn it. You have to break the conditioning cycle. You have to think about it. So much of your food behaviors need to be deliberately conscious. If you can do that, you can help yourself fight weight problems and lose weight. For instance, there are, there's a whole range of behavioral things that you can do if, if you and your family are, are trying to be weight conscious mm-hmm. and food conscious. One of them is if you've bought the classic 12-inch dinner plate, right? get rid of them. And if or put them away. You don't have to throw them away. Put them away where you're not going to reach for them. Get the 10-inch salad plate or the 8-inch uh, plate. Or bowl. Or small bowl, bowls, the smaller bowl, large bowls. and then prepare your food at the kitchen, mm-hmm. and then serve the plates. Put a serving of whatever don't on do each plate. Is, is don't do family style. Is family style sometimes style dinners. easy? It's but quicker and it's easier. You just keep eating at it, right? So that's so, probably so psychologically if, if a bad idea. You get idea. A, a bowl, and you put all the mashed potatoes in the bowl that you've mm-hmm. made, and you put it on the table. Somebody's going to get seconds or thirds, or eat the last of it. You were telling me a funny story about <laughs> when your daughter was young, and and it had to do with the conditioning that you received as a child in your childhood <laughs> home. Mm-hmm. A- and when she, you didn't make her clean her plate, Mm-mm. but what you discovered, and she pointed it out to you, which is what in was front really of all these women it. at Nutri Center or yeah. Nutri Systems that. When you would take her plate off the table, the stuff she hadn't eaten before you would put the plate in the in the sink to be washed, uh-huh. you would eat that food. Yeah, I did. And, and because you were but taught as a child, you don't waste food, you clean your plate. It's, but the, their answer to that yeah. was a different answer than you would have given. Absolutely. But the, their answer to that was to, to um, make me as disgusted as I should have been about food mm-hmm. that somebody else had eaten on their plate and played with and spit out or whatever, right. you know, and say, that's really disgusting. Visualize you, that food differently. It's yeah, not edible. It's not edible. It's been contaminated. It's out. Yeah. So, and so throw it away if she's not going to eat it. Right. But you had a different answer that you would, you would have suggested. My answer was to tell her to start cleaning her own plate off. <laughs> You know, and so that mommy isn't exposed to this risk factor, you yeah. start learning to contribute at home, and you get up and clean the table and, mm-hmm. and clean off the plates. And that's a good answer as well. It, it is, well, but for a different agenda. For a different reason. For a different agenda. But it worked. I mean, I didn't even know I was doing that. Right. She was the one that brought that no, up. So sometimes you have to ask your family members, do you see me do anything that you think is really bad for my weight. I mean, yeah, do you see me like just eat mindlessly? Sneaking m and you know. Yeah. Got my little stash over here in the corner. I mean, some people take their dish and they just keep putting a little bit on and then they eat that and then they take it and put some more on it, and then they keep doing that until they've eaten more than a full plate full. L- let me run through a little litany okay. of some psychological things. If mm-hmm. you're going to be, try to be conscious about your food behaviors that can help you. We've already talked about getting smaller plates. Mm-hmm. We've talked about not eating family style meals. Serve from the pots and pans, if, especially on if you have a the, dining room. Yeah, you go to the stove, you put a, a serving of whatever on the plate, then you take it into the dining room. When I used to do family counseling, I'm retired now from that, but I get these guys, these middle-aged guys that would suddenly be divorced or alone, mm-hmm. and they would come in, and one of the things that they would be doing as an adjustment is they would eat in front of the television, mm-hmm. they'd be watching a sports event, mm-hmm. or they would read because they didn't want to face their loneliness. Mm-hmm. And I used to tell them, never eat in bed, mm-hmm. never eat in front of the television mm-hmm. set, set a place setting, make eating mm-hmm. a formal experience. Don't graze around the room with a paper plate and, and a pile of food. Go sit down at the 
That's really hard table. to do when you're alone. It is it's hard so hard to, to do. do when you're alone. But if you're worried about weight and food behaviors, mm-hmm. and also if you're eating to numb your depression or your distress. Well, that's the next if thing. If you start to be conscious about what mm-hmm. you eat. So you have to think about your food behaviors. So don't eat in front of the television set. Don't eat while you read, even if you're alone. Mm-hmm. Be aware. Slow down. Put your fork down. Put your sandwich and chew. down. And, and stop chew. swallowing things whole. Oh, my God. I, mean, I remember as a child, my parents would, would harass me about, uh, and I thought they were trying to teach me to count, you know, add up <laughs> number facts. But chew your food 75 times or chew your uh-huh. food 50 times before you swallow. Mm-hmm. It really does make positive differences in, in the outcomes. Well, there's a good reason to chew. You have, you you have saliva to actually the break the food down. Yeah. So if it goes down... Whole like I learned in residency because you didn't have you didn't know when yeah. the beeper was going to go off so you just right. swallowed your down. food and you yeah. know five minutes you had an entire meal down you and then you went running off. My wife so that was a bad habit. My wife was a school teacher for thirty years and she had like ten minutes to eat her lunch because mm-hmm. she had supervision of kids and problems to solve and parents to call and things to run off and all that. So now she's retired. She still eats her meal in ten minutes unless mm-hmm. we. Consciously focus on slow down. There's a psychological hunger point where you, no matter how much volume you've crammed into your body, you're not going to be satiated or experience mm-hmm. that uh, short of 20 minutes. Right. It takes so 20 minutes. You, for you need to, feel to slow full. down and make your dinner last 20 minutes. Put your fork down. Chew your food. Actually, say something to someone. Hello. I actually how eat are less you? when I this go out, good. even though the food's probably well, better. Because you talk all the time. Yeah. But. <laughs> Because because another thing I learned I learned and I pass on is yeah. that eating is not always about just the food. Right. Eating is about it's a social experience. Social socially connecting and, and sharing ideas and, and so when I go to a, a party or God forbid a buffet of anything, right. then I usually wait and talk to a lot of people that I want right. to talk to before I ever get near the food. And then I'm not as hungry for some right. reason. So I'm not starving and I don't, don't try you to pile not, things on. Because that psychological 20-minute point mm-hmm. is reached. Um, to, to go back to the, the behavioral changes, if you are conscious of serving size, portion control, mm-hmm. and you put a portion on a plate and from the stove and take it to the table where there's a formal setting, mm-hmm. and you eat that, if you eat it slowly, if you put your fork down, if you chew so many times, if you indulge in conversations, mm-hmm. if someone's there, all of that stretches that psychological time so that you feel full. Mm-hmm. And what I would encourage, if you think you want seconds, a lot of times it's because your mouth is craving taste and not because your body's craving food. Mm-hmm. And if you will or do that, if we have a low fat diet, you're always wanting seconds because right. you're not full. Right. But if you will get up and do something physical, go for a walk around the house, go for a walk around the block, come back, make that break from the table mm-hmm. and from food consumption, then you come back. Then if you want seconds, mm-hmm. have seconds. That makes. But that's don't a good just go habit. get seconds because you're still in the eating zone. Or that because you ate too fast. Yes. Now, all of these behavioral things are right. well and good, but we're not always perfect. No. And some people have a hard time when they're hungry, thinking about mm-hmm. these things. Mm-hmm. And when they, or when they, especially in people who are dieting, and when they stop eating for long periods of time, that's not good for you either because it's no. it mobilizes sugar from your liver that you've stored up, and that dumps into your bloodstream and also makes fat. But, but it isn't good for you to go without eating, and it's not good for you to eat too much too right. often. So, th- so if you can't get the behavioral things, together besides replacing your hormones and your nutrients that you're missing right then um, what what we try to do is to help our patients if possible we have we have and are starting more of a, a diet program and that has to do with medications and right. now there's several Excellent. different medications that we can use we ha- there are appetite suppressants for people who feel like they're hungry all the time and those are usually an amphetamine like drug so you can't take them forever you take them for short periods of time and this is kind of to kick start the addiction process to, to fight it to fight the addiction process so if you're addicted to sugar and you're already having mm-hmm. obesity issues drugs like metformin or victoza right. Can mm-hmm. help you fight the diabetes. And I was going to hit that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, it's either uh, appetite I'm suppressant. Yeah. I'm trying to. I mean, we You're can we can talk sequence. about that. It's yeah. appetite suppressant, or it's because you have insulin resistance. Right. 
And so then we treat you with medications like metformin and Victoza that can counteract the insulin resistance. Right. And then there's new drugs mm -hmm. that are just for weight loss that do both in a way. Uh, one's called Qsimia, and there's another one I'm not too familiar I've with. Heard of that one. Qsimia is a combination of fentaramine, which is an amphetamine, and um, a drug we usually use for seizures or for migraines. And we put those two together, and that actually causes weight loss. And I have wow. one of one of uh, my it's friends. One of those serendipity things where they've discovered this drug works like for this. The fen fen thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a similar idea, but it's not the similar drug. Right. But it works together better than either one of those alone. Wow. And um, but that's that's a you'd have to come in, be monitored, and do and all that. And you need physician guidance. Yeah. This is not something you buy over the counter. No, and none go, of these are right. Over the counter, and right. most of the over count over the counter things are stimulants, and they don't really work very well. Sometimes people eat more on them than uh, they do um, without them. So it's very important to ha be on the right thing. And these medical treatments are very helpful to get people going, and then they and as is testosterone. Mm -hmm. If you're over 50 and you're not on testosterone and you're doing these things, you're likely not to make muscle. You're likely not to stay keep your weight off because you don't have any muscle to burn your calories when you stop doing the diet. Right. So so you go on almost any diet. You, you, diets don't work because they don't change behaviors. You mm -hmm. can restrict yourself and starve yourself or over-focus on just eating one thing, no carbs, only protein, and you can lose 10, 12 pounds. Mm -hmm. But the minute you go off the diet, you start eating the way you always ate mm -hmm. and the weight comes back on. So we're talking about lifestyle changes that involve diet, exercise, consciousness, not automated eating, not automated prepared consumption. And sometimes a little help from a physician who will guide you in weight loss. Yes. We also have the iLipo machine that helps us, mm -hmm. um, helps our patients while they're losing weight, if they have an area on their body that has more fat, like some women don't like their saddlebags on their thighs or, or on, their, uh, on their hips or belly, or belly. they can while they're dieting, actually use this laser to dissolve the fat in those areas. Right. So it's like weight loss if you ran a marathon. It's the same kind of loss of fat, but it's in the place you want it. It's not all over, and you don't have to run a marathon. Right. Then we, we give them... <laughs> so if your daughter's getting married and you want to fit into <laughs> yeah, the dress right. and you need a six-week... You know, shift, you can yeah. get that. Yeah, but you can it's not that. a lifestyle shift, and it's no, not going to... But, no, but it does... Help you because I we give them um, yes. we give them diet diet counseling now we just right. started doing this diet counseling with uh, using the weight loss uh, medication uh, so it helps jumpstart the process it keeps them from eating back to their weight right. because the one thing with liposuction and with with um, I lipo is that you lose fat fast your body's hungry. Yes. It's really, really, really hungry. So you're you're you want to go out and eat more. It makes right. you I mean, I experienced that when I, I tried it. So you have to stop that that um, push, that actual push to the refrigerator. Yeah. And and do something else. And the amphetamine allows that. Right. So we do that for two months and then you should have changed your behavior. You should have changed. You should have had some time where you're not hungry all the time to actually change your lifestyle so that you can keep the weight off. Right. So some of these things are like crutches that help you mm -hmm. until you heal, you until you everything. get better. But some are not. Some are true things that you continue to need for the rest of your life, like testosterone. Right. You're always going to need mm -hmm. the testosterone and the thyroid to function. Uh, the supplements like DIM or things like okay. iLipo, they're bridges across the chasm. Mm -hmm. They are. And so. some people take DIM their whole lives. That keeps them from regaining a lot of the belly fat mm -hmm. as they as they lose it. But truly keeping your metabolism going means thyroid and, and muscle and and the muscle is made by the testosterone. So we're talking about a lot of different things. A systemic program that comes from acts of consciousness that can help you lose weight and fight obesity and change the way you and your family live. And we all need that. So once again, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. 
For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.